Hey everybody, Lori Marie Jenkins, mixed media artist, Vallejo, California. It's kind of a cool morning here. Uh, I just got back from the Alameda flea market with my friend Lori. We had a very good time and I didn't spend a bunch of money because I'm purging right now. So that wouldn't make much sense to uh, spend a bunch of money on a bunch of stuff that I really don't need at this point in time. So anyway, we are going to be working with pore painting today. Two techniques that I'm playing with, and I will share them with you. I'll show you the supplies that you will need, and uh, we're going to have fun. It's messy fun, but we're going to have fun. So let's jump right to the table, and I will uh, show you the supplies, okay? All right, see you on the table. Okay, welcome back. These are some of the pieces that I've had fun with. This piece isn't even dry yet. So I'm going to show you uh, just some pieces that I've been playing with. I made this piece this morning. And with the same colors, I made this piece. Not quite dry yet. Okay, this is another piece that I made. This, those have been made with the, um, it's called a dirty pour. These are some more that I've been playing with. These were on um, small canvases, which were very fun to play with. And I just did these with acrylic paints. And then this one. So that's what we're going to be doing today, okay? I'm going to shut the camera off and uh, get the supplies. Be right back. All right, we're going to go through the supplies that I used. Uh, I just have a piece of wood that I put gesso on, a light coat of white gesso. These are 5x5s. Five five, so I find these easy to work with on the screen. Just some cheap acrylic paint. I'm going to use four colors on this. See what happens. So I'm going to use these four colors on our pour today. You'll need some small cups and some tongue depressors or coffee stirrers, whichever you are, have around the house, really. I had these around the house. A gift card or credit card. Starbucks has nothing on it. This is what we're going to use to spread the paint. I used GAC 100. It's a golden product. It's uh, an acrylic extender. I'll have this information on the notes um, below the video, okay? Some white acrylic paint. Nothing special. A little bit of water in case it's too thick and I need to thin it down. This is a uh, silicone. It's 100% silicone. This is a uh, belt lubricant. I'll have the info about this one as well. This is what creates the fun cells in the piece. I have a foil container, foil dish that I use to make my mess in. And I put a couple of cups upside down so that I can uh, dry the piece, make the piece, and dry the piece in here. And then last but not least is my handy dandy torch. Ta 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 ta, manly torch. So I use this to uh, create some of the cells after I spread the paint. All right, so let me set that aside. We'll get back to that. Since I have four colors, I'm going to need five cups one, two, three four and five. All right, one of these is going to be for the white paint. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of paint in each cup. Not very much. I'm going a little bit more. Not very much. How about a little bit more? Okay, so about that much of each color. Okay. 
and then twice as much white as you do the other colors, okay? There we go. Next, I'm going to grab the acrylic. Sorry, Hudson, was that disturbing? Grab the extender, and you'll put twice as much as ex extender as you have paint. And you'll use one tongue depressor or coffee stirrer per color. And you're just going to get in there and stir it really well. Make sure it's mixed very well. And you'll do this with each one of your paints. And you want it to run off like that. Can you see how it's running off? nice and runny. You'll do that with each one and then with the white one which is actually thicker you'll stir that extender in there and then it's usually kind of thick. I'm going to add a little bit of water, thin it down some, That's better. Oh, you'll need one more cup. Let's make that six cups. Ta-da! All right, I'm going to mix these up, and then I'll bring you back when it's time to add the silicone. Okay? See you in a minute. All right, all my paints are nicely mixed. I'm going to come in with my 100% silicone and put a little bit of silicone in each color. The silicone is what helps create the cells if you will. And I'm just going to stir that a little bit, make sure it's all stirred in. All right, I'm going to start off with just a pour painting, and then we'll go into the dirty pour after that. So I'll grab my my piece of wood with this uh, with the gesso on it put it in my work spot start off with a little bit of purple here just gonna pour that on and then maybe this blue, a little bit of green, yellow. You can use as many colors as you want. Two, three, just play with it. Oh my goodness, just play. And then I'll put some white in. All right. Everybody cross your fingers. Let's see what's going to happen, huh? All right, I have that credit card here someplace or gift card here. What I'm going to do is just lightly drag this across. And it is starting to make the cells already. Now by making the cells, can you see where it's starting to separate? Get my big hands out of here. You don't want to play with it too much. You don't want to move it around too much. I mean, I want to get in there and just move it around some more. And it's really not a good idea. Can I move this closer into the camera? 
We're going to bring the camera a little closer here. And you can see these cells starting to develop. See where they're making the circles? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Of course I want to get in there and fix that. Because there's a little spot with no paint. Now, Lori Marie, just leave it alone. It's fine. All right, so you can see the cells developing here. Now, I take my handy dandy flamethrower, turn it on, and I'm just going to lightly go over it with the flame, okay? Sorry for the noise. got some good cell development here. I'm going to set this aside and we're going to do the dirty pour with the same colors. Okay? So let me get this out of here and we'll get set up for the next one. Alright, let's get ready for the dirty pour. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take half of the white and put it in the cup. So now I have two cups with white in them. All right, I'm going to set that one aside. Okay, so here's our white. All right. Now I'm going to take the rest of the purple, put it in there, like that. Beautiful already. Now the rest of the yellow. rest of the blue and the green and I'm going to top it off with the white that we have. This is more than enough. I could probably do a, an 8x8 with this but I don't have an 8x8 prepared. So we're just going to have to deal with it really being sloppy. That's okay. We're going to take our substrate, our piece of wood with the gesso on it, and we're going to flip it over. Okay, it's already trying to ooze out of there. All right, ready? Here we go. We're going to let it do its thing there. Kind of cover up some of the edges. Here again, you don't want to manipulate it too much. I like to really get in there and move it around, and it's not really a good idea because it breaks up the cells too much. Isn't that fun? So I'm just going to try and take it to the edges being aware of what's going on here. It's beautiful. Let's set that down and just watch that for a minute. Looks like I've got a glunk of something there. Beautiful something something happening under there that'll probably rise up to the top. Didn't quite get coverage on this corner. Pull that back. Now we see she should be able to see some cells develop here where it's starting to make little circles.
wipe my hands off. Woo! How fun is that? Alright, I'm gonna come in with a flamethrower. Wowza. Pretty cool. Can you see the cell development? Beautiful. All right, I'm going to let these set. Uh, they actually have to dry for about 24 hours, but I'm going to let them uh, set for a few hours and then I will bring you back and show you what has happened because they will continue to change and evolve and become wonderful. So, um, all right, now you know how to play. Go create. Go have fun. Go play. I'll bring you back when uh, when these are dry. Okay, here's the last piece that we worked on, and you can see how it's broken up into cells. It's absolutely gorgeous. This piece is still a little bit wet. I did work on the other pieces a little bit. I'm going to bring them in and show you. I actually put a coat of resin on them, so um, I have to precariously bring them over to the table. So here's uh, the last piece that we did. I'll be right back. This is a piece that I worked on this morning. This is a piece that we worked on together. You're kind of in the shadow because I have it in a box, but you can still see. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let me grab the last one. This is a piece I worked on this morning. This is a cousin to the big piece, if you will. Uh, same technique, same colors, uh, just at a different time. And then these are two pieces that I worked on yesterday. And they are nice and full of cells. This one is gorgeous with all of its cells. So uh, hopefully you can see all what's going on there. Maybe you can zoom in. Uh, now you've seen it all. So now you can go create and uh, go have fun and uh, go play. See you soon. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We are at a precious 115. We are getting there. All right. See you next time.